All right, pre-algebra uh, students, we're looking at the properties of real numbers today. So this is kind of like recognizing simile and metaphor in language arts. It's something you have to be able to recognize. It's something you have to be able to recognize in context. And it's something that you have to have a name for that you kind of already know what it is. Like a simile is a comparison. You know what a comparison is. Now you have to have a name for the ones that look a particular way, you know, the like and as ones, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of the analogy I want you to think about here. Okay, it's kind of the analogy I want you to think about here. So let's get started with the commutative property. The commutative property states that the order in which numbers are added will not change the sum. To commute is to travel. That's like changing the order of where you are, home to school, school to home. I mean, that's kind of what commuting is. It's changing that order of, of, of where you go. And you know that the travel in between may be in a different order, but you're still in the same two places. So that's one way you can think about the commutative property. In addition to the way that numbers are added, not changing the sum, the way orders, the order in which they are multiplied will not change the product. So here's an example of the um, commutative property of addition. 3 plus 4 is 4 plus 3 x plus y is y plus x. So you have to be able to recognize it in numbers and in variables. And for multiplication, 2 times 3 equals 3 times 2, or gh equals hg. Remember what gh means. gh does not mean a two-digit number where the first digit is the value of g and the second digit is the value of h. That's not what it means. This means g times h, and this means h times g. But we don't need the dots. We just show it with the multiplication stuck together. So commutative property, change order. C for change, O for order. The associative property, you associate with your group. You associate with your group, your associates. The associates at a law firm are a group of lawyers, young lawyers that are not partners yet. So you associate with your group. It does not matter how you group addition or multiplication, the answer will be the same. So if I have two plus one plus three, and then I still have two plus one plus three, but I do the one plus three first, it's the same thing as if I do the 2 plus 1 first. And you show that by grouping with parentheses. So A plus the quantity B plus C is equal to the quantity A plus B plus C. There's that use of the quantity again. 5 times the product of 6 and 7 is equal to the product of 5 and 6 times 7. Notice again, the order is not changing here. 5, 6, 7, 5, 6, 7, A, B, C, A, B, C, just the grouping. Just the grouping. Onward. Now, let's stop and think about this for just a minute. Does the commutative property hold for subtraction or division? What about the associative property? Well, let's try it. The commutative property of subtraction? Well, let's see. 5 minus 3 is 2. Is 3 minus 5 equal to 2? No. Well, see, some of you were telling me that in the beginning, but what you forgot about is negatives, and 2 does not equal negative 2. So no commutative property of subtraction. What about the associative property? of subtraction. Uh, well, we'll come back to that in a minute. How about the commutative property of division? 10 divided by 2 is 5. 2 divided by 10 is 1 fifth. Well, so we should notice something. 2 and negative 2 have something specific about them. They're opposites. 5 and 1 fifth have something specific, specific about them. They are multiplicative inverses, okay, or reciprocals. But we notice that, no, we can't have a commutative property of subtraction, and we can't have a commutative property of division. For the associative property, it takes a little bit more to show it, but let's do that real quick with the, um, the time here. So 3 minus 2, the quantity 2 minus 1. What is that? Well, 2 minus 1 is 1, so this is 3 minus 1, which is 2. Let's regroup it. All right, is that the same? Well, 3 minus 2 is 1, minus 1 is 0. 2 does not equal 0. So at this point, I think we probably recognize that no would be the big fat answer here. No, these properties do not work for subtraction or division. Inverse properties. So the inverse is the opposite. When we say inverse, we mean kind of opposite. Now, specifically with addition, that's actually the opposite. Like the inverse of 2, the additive inverse of 2 would be negative 2, so the opposite sign. All right. So there's 2... Um, inverse properties. First, the addition one. When you add a number and its opposite, the result is zero. The result is zero. That is your additive inverse property. Once you write that in, additive inverse whoop, e 
property. Wow, horrible handwriting, Mr. Comps. How about this one? When you multiply a number by its reciprocal or multiplicative inverse, the result is one. And that's what you see down here at the bottom. So a number plus its opposite is zero. A number plus its opposite is zero. That's our additive inverse property. And then the other one is our multiplicative inverse property. So multiplicative, multiplicative inverse property. And that's this one. Any number times its reciprocal is equal to 1. Think about the actual multiplication there. We'd make it 6 over 1 times 1 over 6. If we just multiply, we get 6 over 6. That's 1. Okay, the multiplicative inverse property tells you why we do division with fractions the way we do. Because when you divide by 6, it does the same thing as multiplying by 1 sixth. So that, that's why, that's that great multiplicative inverse property. It makes dividing fractions so much nicer. Okay, a couple more. Identity properties. The identity properties. The number's identity doesn't change. It doesn't change whether you add zero or multiply by one. So adding zero, that is again your additive identity property. And multiplying by one, that is your multiplicative. Multiplicative. That's such a long word, and sometimes it kind of gets stuck in your mouth when you're trying to say it. Identity property. So let's take a look at these. Additive identity property. Anything plus zero is itself. Anything plus zero is itself. Anything times one is itself. Multiplicative identity property. So 1b, notice no dot, 1b equals b. This is actually what allows us to understand that b just means 1b. We don't need the one. Because the identity property tells me anything times one is itself. So this is actually what tells me I don't need that one in front of that B right there. Okay, two more. The distributive property. When you multiply a sum or a difference by a number, distribute that multiplication to all terms in the sum or difference. Okay, only when this is a sum or a difference right here. So A times the quantity B plus C is equal to A times B plus a times c. We make a little meow, meow, little double rainbow there. Okay, let's think about if it was um, a difference in the middle there. a times the quantity b minus c would be a times b minus a times c. So again, we have our little meow, meow, double rainbow. What would this look like in just numbers? Well, it's kind of silly in just numbers. And it is one of those things that really doesn't apply itself well to just a numerical expression because order of operations tells us to add this first. And of course, I still want you to do that. What we have to be able to recognize... Sorry, I paused it to avoid the PA getting too loud on the video. So what we have to be able to recognize is that this expression right here is equivalent to saying 3 times 2 plus 3 times 5. That's just silly because we know order of operations tells us to do it the way that we're used to doing it. Really, the place where you're going to see this be the actual useful thing that it is is when we have something like 3 times the quantity x plus 2. Now, you've been working on translating this stuff, but you haven't actually done anything with this stuff yet. We're going to get to that after the benchmark. If I multiply 3 times x plus 2, I get 3 times x plus 3 times 2, which is 6. That's where the distributive property actually comes in. And that's where you're going to see it used, actually, like, usefully. This is just to make sure you understand the concept being given to you in this text up here. And let's just have today's secret word be dachshund, which is the formal name for wiener dog, like the little skinny hot dog-looking dogs, dachshund. You're going to have to Google that to know how to spell it. Multiplication property of zero, I believe, is your last property. It is. Just checking my number of slides. This one is super duper easy. Anything times zero is zero. That's it. 27 times zero. Negative 27, excuse me, times zero. Zero. A times zero. Zero. Now, dividing by zero is a whole other story. And real quick, let's go over why we can't divide by zero. I think that's an important concept to have down. So let's start with something simple. And this is, again, this is just an aside. This is not part of the property. I figure I don't need to explain that property anymore because this property is super simple. Anything times zero is zero. Multiplication property of zero. Now, why can't we divide by zero? Start with a simple division sentence you know is true. 
And note that I can now say three times two equals six by going backwards and saying three times two is equal to six. Now try it with zero. Most people's instinct to say is to say that six times zero is zero. Well, now go backwards. That would be, if this were true, that would mean that zero times zero would equal six. But we know that is clearly not true. So this is impossible. It's what we call undefined. And that's the best you can get, folks. That's the best explanation I can give you at the moment. Because if you can't do it forwards, if you can't do it forwards and backwards, then it's not possible at all. That's why. All right. Hopefully you watched the entire video and paid nice and close attention. There's lots of good audio in this one. You can't really just get it just by copying it down, folks. So if you haven't been listening to the audio, definitely go back and do that. And don't you dare tell anyone else what I told you during the distributed property slide. See you guys in class.